Season two. We're ready. Here we go. It's it's been a a, a seven month layoff, but bench racing is back. Presented to you by Fast Eddie Racewear. Shout out to Fast Eddie Racewear making season two happen. They uh, they signed on the dotted line. They set it all up. So we got ten brand new episodes coming for season two. Thanks to Fast Eddie Racewear. And here we go. Episode number one is the Thunder Car version. I've had a lot of requests. For this pairing, dating right back to last year, we couldn't make it happen with scheduling and all that, so I wanted to make sure that it was our season premiere. To my left, multi-time Thundercar champion, Moss Sport legend. This dude's won a ton of races at Court, the Speedway. Just finished on the podium at Peterborough, the Autumn Colors Classic, after knocking the whole front end of his car off in the first lap. This dude's never done an interview with less than a thousand views. One of the most requested mem uh, members of the racing community. I'm excited to have him on. Making his bench racing debut, JBJ, John Baker Jr. To my right, making his second appearance on bench racing, former Thundercar regular. If you want to pan over to his latest project, check that out. Not a Thundercar. We're going to talk a little bit about that. He's going on tour next year. Out of Brooklyn, Ontario, we're in his race shop. My first ever trip to Brooklyn. I'm going to stop on the souvenir shop on my way out and get some <laughs> trinkets, some coasters, a sweater to let everyone know I was here. I saw you, There's like a Brooklyn travel place. I don't know why, because why would anyone want to leave? It's the bustling metropolis of this area of the province. It is none other than Cowboy Dan Price picked up a feature win at Peterborough Speedway this year. Another. These are really two of the most likable dudes in the whole industry, so I'm stoked for, uh, for what we got going on. What we're going to do, because it's the first time we've had a chance to, to really interview the two of you, we're going to go all the way back to where you got your start. That's always a fun way to start the interview, so we'll start with you, Cowboy. How did you get started in racing, man? Because I know there's a, there's, there's a bit of a family element to your to your program. There, there sure, hell, sure as hell is a family element to it now with, with your daughter and your wife, but everyone gets involved. So going way back to day one, when was day one? When did you get started? Uh, probably first trip to a, to a short track would have been Peterborough Speedway, late 95. I heard there was a track up there. I, I, I went to this pre-internet. We just kind of went up and found out where it was and went to watch racing. And there was about two races left in the season and then autumn colors. And uh, I was pretty much hooked at that point. Built the car, went to, went to Mossport. Actually caught one race at Mossport that season. Thought, you know, this place is pretty cool. Built the car, went ran Mossport. So 96, a couple years in Thundercar there, a couple years in Challenger. Took a stab at a late model, a super late model, dabbled. It went horribly wrong. It was, it was a bad scene. I ended up in a mini back in a mini stock, my tail between my legs, not a, not a penny to my name. It was terrible. <laughs> I, had a, I, had great, I had a great time. Some the pictures. adventures where you end up penniless are always the fun ones, right? There's some great pictures of the car. There's some parts around still, but yeah, it was a bad scene. Was, I wasn't ready. <laughs> <laughs> So now, is this going to be your first venture into a modified? Because I know Mossport had the modified class before. Do you have a modified before? Never been in one. Never been in a modified. Okay, cool. So, we're, so this is going to be yeah. brand new. Yeah. So you were always a car guy, I'm assuming, from a young age. Yeah, I was a motorcycle guy at first, and then I kind of got into cars in high school, and that was that was that. Because you got hot rods now. You got yeah. rat rods. I mean, that that's like that's even cooler than a race car. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know, man. I mean, no rules. No rules. No I know a man. lot of guys with race cars. I don't no know too rules. many guys around. I know two guys with hot rods right here. <laughs> That's like I can count it on one hand. Two of them are right here. Yeah. Uh, these are still my babies. I, I, I drive the old car around. It's a it's a daily driver. It's it's something I wanted to do. I wanted to build a hot rod. I always wanted that. And but really, my love is back to race cars. It always ends up, you know. I got race cars. One of them sits in the trailer. The broken race thunder car sits in the trailer. The mod sits in here. The 51 sits outside. It hasn't been inside in eight years. That's this my love is race cars. See, he wants to talk about the broken race car in the trailer. Coincidentally, also was was in the same wreck where he knocked the front end of his car off. So it's every it's full circle, you know, sunrise, sunset sort of deal. Where these two guys are in the same wreck at Autumn Color. So over to my left, man. I'm so excited to have you on, dude. So many people have wanted me to have you on bench racing. You've been around for as long as I've been in the sport. I've just always known the name John Baker Jr. I remember the your your CRX and your mini stock, and before then you had the the Monte Carlo, and and uh, yeah. you had that the modified with the big wing on it, a Mossport. I mean, you're a legend, dude. When did you first get your start? I mean, I know you're you're a, a multi generational racer, so I know I'm assuming that's how you got your start. But when, when did you get started out? 
Well, I guess, uh, first of all, I gotta tell you, Spence, this is cool to be here. Right on! And I'm more nervous than most of my competitors when they're rolling tech lane, let me tell you. <laughs> oh, I've been worried about this since I got this shirt made with all my sponsors' names. Look at that, I love it, look at that, use every inch, oh, I love it. So, uh, I'm introduced. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> to, to, uh, I guess I have to ask my mom when we first hit the racetrack, but uh, I would have to say at the very beginning, I think I was about two years old, I guess, on my dad's go-kart trailer hidden in there and I remember sitting on his crew members, uh, Mike Canner, sitting up on his shoulders watching the go-karts and then I remember crying like you wouldn't believe when uh, dad put all the go-karts in the storage unit and had them all sold and uh, then turned up, that was would have been pre-80, maybe 82, Wow. some of that neighborhood wow. and then uh, he turned up at Barry Speedway and did Peterborough and Barry and got to where everybody wasn't really his friend no more and switched around and then Can-Am Midget. Uh, he raced the can -Ams for a while, toured all over the place, and then we went and crewed for uh, Jack Hewitt with Dick Mahoney Group and all them guys, some stuff in the States to do the indoor thing, and then I got my own car together in, I pause it was 94, but it might have been 95. Anyway, one or the other for Peterborough Speedway, we ran there for a while, had a ball, ran into some problems, ended up selling the car off to fix some other stuff that I'd done dumb, <laughs> and uh, got, that, got that all good to go, and then built a mini stock car, and that changed my whole career. Because there's something about running on street tires, low horsepower. It's like if we all went to the go-kart track right now, one of us does something real dumb, you need to take a whole bunch of laps to get that back. Yeah. So I learned so much in those three years. I played, I ran the mini, race in the mini stock car. I learned so much and then got things back together, got it all sorted out where I could jump back into a V8 car, got back into a real drive car, and, and I like this. My, my mini stock, going into the mini stock in the middle of my career at this point, or whatever you call it, really helped me out because it taught me how to actually drive and save the car and babysit my stuff and not always use the gas pedal to get out of it. Not saying I let off very much, but it taught me how to do that. And then uh, back and forth, we left Peter Speedway because they asked us to leave. They, uh, they, so, so, <laughs> they asked us to leave. They act like they said like you're stinking up the show because you're winning too much, you got to leave or what? Your car's not legal. What was the, what was the reason? When uh, a track asks you to leave, I mean... For that particular, uh, Peter Speedway, it was because they asked... How many times have you been asked to leave a track? Um, Four times, a, day. a couple times, a couple times. But uh, Peterborough Speedways in particular, we had a problem. They asked everybody for their advice, their opinion on what was going on. I am a horrendously opinionated guy. Um, if you don't like my opinion, I apologize in advance. It sucks your opinion's wrong, but that's just how it works with me. And uh, they asked my opinion, and I gave them an answer, and they weren't happy with it. So I ended up with a one-week suspension for it, and uh, then they said maybe I should take the rest of the year off. And that was the motivation. Uh, Peter was an amazing place. I have a ball every time I'm there. I love driving the track. I know all its bumps and lumps and jumps. I left there. I went to Mossport. They did not welcome me with open arms at Mossport. They tolerated me. This because they already knew about your reputation for being a horribly opinionated guy, or what? I don't know. I was told there was a guy there named uh, Beatty, and he couldn't be beat. And I said to everybody, everyone can be beat. You know, it doesn't matter who you are, you can be beat. I even, I've even i seen Junior Hamlin lose a race, maybe one or two, but I have seen it happen. It's happened. <laughs> so uh, anyway, I went there and uh, had a bit of an off year and in the beginning and then turned things around and just had a ball. Ended up uh, the first year there, won the championship, most checkered flags, and uh, they didn't get rookie of the year because, uh, well, I wasn't a rookie. <laughs> but I uh, had an absolute ride there and then just sort of bouncing back and forth. The Thunder Cars where my heart's at. It's just too much fun. There's something about it. You can take them almost anywhere with 100 pounds of lead in your trailer and get the thing to the track and go racing, but I uh, jumped on. My dad retired from doing the Freeman Motorsports ride, and they had bought a brand new car, and I jumped into that with Randy. That was an awesome opportunity. I had a ball with that, and uh, things have evolved so much in that class that they've evolved it, I think, to where you need to spend way more time, not just money, but time as well as money, and I think that we're just kind of out of the extra time that I have and Randy has, but I would look forward to bringing that car back out again. There will be, It will work out somehow, and uh, if I knew today what I knew back when I had the truck or back in 98 or whatever, I'm sure I could have a lot more people not liking me a lot faster. <laughs> so now, back to what you were saying about the mini stock, those years, we both ended up in mini stocks, our tail between our legs at about the same time. Well, they weren't between our legs, man. We were you know, learning. Well, you know what? Awesome. You, know, you say you learned a lot about racing. Oh. I learned so much about racing then. I learned that it, how to have fun at the track and how completely different outlook. I remember you'd show up. You and Sarah stop at Dollar M on the way by. She gave you five dollars allowance or whatever. Yeah, they look silly strings, you string know, smirking out the window. Bomb in with your dollar your your Dollar M bag, and if you all take to see what you got at Dollar M with that way. Oh yeah, that was the awesome. Day you had the balloon. The, she let you splurge and bought the the balloon animal kit with the pump. Oh, and the that was great. When I make the balloon. <laughs> animal. We, it was great. We get in the track, we goof around, you jump in the cars, you go race, you jump out of the cars. The first thing you do, you're not checking. 
He just jumped out. He's running for his balloon animal. Can he speak in balloon animal? Oh, we had all the kids. Every kid in the pit got a something. And none of them looked like they were supposed to. It comes with this little instruction. The slightly irregular oh, balloon animals. Man. The instructions well, we were trying to race at the same time. Yeah. Non-anatomically correct balloon oh, animals. There's a water awesome. gun's getting confiscated out of your car. But you know what? I yeah. learned so much about how to have fun. We're not going to... We're not, I'm not going to be pros. I'm not going to make a living doing it. It's a hobby. I learned it's a hobby. I just come back from from, from getting way too deep and and, and learn, learn so much that I haven't forgotten from that experience in the mini socket. Had out fun and just yeah. and, and made a great time out of it. And that was a, that was a good years. That was a lot of fun. Now that timeline, that would have been what, like two, 2004? Uh, no, early 2000s. One and two, two no, and three. See, that was before up in my neck was we even had mini socks. We didn't have mini socks in 2001, 2002. Like, it all started, I think it, like Barry really sort of started the, yeah, the mini fairly then early it sort of trickled down over yeah. to Peterborough. So that was really when you guys raced probably Jeremy Giro. Yep. yep. Um what were some of the other Yeah I'm his fan of the car. Hannah <laughs> what is, uh, Jack Hannah. Joey McComb was in a was a Honda prelude back yeah, then. Yeah I remember Joey McComb showing up. And his dad then they were showing up and just <clears> Man I made I made that guy mad at me one night. Joey McComb. Oh wow and then he I always got along with Joey not that guy's awesome. And uh, one night he was so mad they had this whole ordeal where if you won too much, you had to add weight to your car. Yeah. And that was one of the worst things I had to learn with racing was how to lose. So <laughs> we'd run around there and you'd, you'd start to pick who you're going to stick with the feature win. Because you just wanted the points and it's second paid, I don't know, 10 bucks, first paid 15 or whatever. So you're leading going into three and you just let off and let second place pass Actually, you? Actually, it was worse than that because this particular night I was slow backing it up and backing it up and Joey got caught in traffic and he just... He just wasn't getting where he needed to be, so I go down the back chute and I just lift coming off a of two. And now I'm rolling down on the top, they got the double checkers going, just waving to beat the band. I thought, where is he? I can't hear him, I can't nothing. I look over, he's sitting on my left side, and he wouldn't go. He, so he, he so just, you got to both just So we're just, just cutting down off a of four. Like you're driving through a parking lot at Christmas yeah. time, waiting for a spot to open oh, up. So then I jump on the throttle again. So when he jumps on the throttle, I jump on the brakes, and he takes the wind. <laughs> And uh, and anyway, Peter Will Speedway offered me 50 bonus points for making a mockery of the show. So I should have won it because I got the win anyway. But it would have only been 25 if I had took the win. But I guess, you know, so it taught me to be a little bit more, you know, you only need to win a race by six car lengths. You need two car lengths. You need two car lengths in case you do something stupid. You need two car lengths in case the guy behind you gets a good run at you and does something stupid. And then you need two car lengths to make it showy so the guy knew you beat him. All, all my teenagers that are out there watching this, because yeah. the, the young fan base that we got is huge, that six car lengths, six, that's all you for that reason, that's what you need to remember. Y'all go home and do your homework, that's what you need to know. So, balloon animal kit, silly yeah. strings, yeah. six okay. car lengths. That's what you've learned from Uncle JBJ here <laughs> in the season two premiere. That's all you need to know. How to have a successful mini sock career. Oh, no. And if you're taking water guns out of the track, try and silly string, it's good if the flag guy doesn't know. Try to be demure yeah, about yeah, it. They will try and confiscate it from you. Get stopped on the stand, the front straight. <laughs> There's Bob coming down the stand, pulling silly string out of Johnny's car. That was awesome. Man. <laughs> I mean, um, you guys sort of like. I can't really compare what it was like going from the 80s to the 90s because I wasn't around, but I know how much the scene has changed from 95 to. 2014. I mean, the whole, the industry, the sport, at every level, has changed so much. And you've sort of lived through it as a, as a car owner and as a competitor. I mean, is there any way to even quantify it? Oh, it's, it's huge. It, it's the amount of, it's such a, it's not even like it's the same sport anymore in some ways. The amount of money that it costs, that we're, not that it costs, it's that we're spending, that we've elected to spend. Yeah. Remember the day, you know, it was a big deal, a guy showed up in an enclosed trailer. Now, hey, look at that guy in a four five showed up on, a, on an open trailer. Look at that guy. <laughs> we brought a mini stock and a stacker to Autumn Colors this year. We did. We were pushing the envelope a little and bit. And it wasn't the only mini stock coming up with stacker. No, it wasn't. <laughs> we're, we're taking it to the next level here. I remember I got my first enclosed in... 2000 or 2001 and everybody kept coming over oh you borrow your dad in dad's in close so i took a photocopy of the ownership <laughs> blew it up stuck it on the wall of the trailer it's like damn it, i'm this making the monthly mine. payments on this thing it's mine i own it yeah. must have walked into peter L. like he had the cat by the ass with an enclosed trailer actually our first trip with the enclosed trailer was probably one of the scariest rides of my life <laughs> i uh, hooked it on the back of my old piece of crap suburban <laughs> no, sorry, my black, it was my black, whatever, one of my barely empty illegal trucks. Barely, I think the empty one of them barely, there was days when yeah, they were like, right didn't there. even make the barely. Oh, man, they ripped the plates off like three of my vehicles now, they were pretty mean to me, or I was mean to them, but 
me and Kevin loaded the thing up. It was a two-seater pickup truck at a time, five speed. We loaded the thing up at uh, Willie's place, put everything in the trailer, and just didn't care because we bought that off Mahoney, and it was always pulled behind his motorhome. So we never cared about weight and balance. We never put his stuff in. The, I loaded that thing for bear. We headed down the road, and of course, I'm, I'm at that time motivated to get there real quick. So we're flying. We're doing like 95 or 100k down top, up top road, down however you want to word it. We go down this hill, and it took. Shit, we used to, oh, sorry about that. No, no, that's fine. It's probably YouTube. There's no uh, censorship. We, Go ahead. We used both sides of the shoulder, the whole entire road, to get that thing back to where it was, like, stopped and safe. And when we stopped, we stopped in the ditch. The thing was all crooked, sitting there just the edge of the ditch. I looked over at my crew chief, Kevin, and I said, you need a smoke? Because I'm definitely getting out to drink a can of pop. I sat on the back of that truck and gathered my thoughts for probably 15 minutes. And then we, we got a tape measure out on the side of the road. And we figured out that we definitely had the ball head off. And we spent about an hour getting it to where it was probably what we figured should work. And then drove like 60K the whole rest of the track. We were like two hours late. And it was just, I remember got to try. Never was so happy just to get to the track. It was just a mission and making it there. And uh, I, I learned since then we have better equipment now. I, yeah. Upgraded my truck to Dan's old one. Yeah. <laughs> so no more, you don't have to worry about the MTO anymore. Plates stay on the truck, you don't have to worry about it. Yeah, I haven't been pulled over by the MTO in at least a year. That's like when you go into a job site and it's like eight days without an accident. Yeah. And it's truck 365 <laughs> days without an MTO incident right on the dashboard. That's, like that's well, 366, 367, you know, just keep the running got, I got going. nailed one night. I got nailed on December 18th, my boy's birthday. Got nailed on the way home from work and we we're scrapping some cars out, just doing whatever for winter to try and make money for my addiction. <laughs> and uh, I come out on the on-ramp and the MTO guy grabs me. He pulls me over because my license plate tag was out of date. And of course it was. It was only like 15 days out of date. <laughs> anyway, they start the MTO level one inspection on it and it fails miserably. He moves this box in the back and the guy on the bottom could see the guy on the top. And they were just, oh, how dare you bring this on my highway and they were just hailing me. And I said to the guy, I said, here's where we got the problem. No one can tow this. There's a trailer on the back. There's a plow on the front of it. It's a dually suburban tank. There's one tow truck around that can pull it. And it's a five ton and it's not available. So they rip the plates off. They hold me there for about an hour and a half, two hours. I'm on the phone with Sarah. Of course, now I'm the bad dad because this is the boy's birthday party and I'm making the whole world late and it's just the devil. And he had a slightly irregular balloon animal came <laughs> yeah. with him and, you know, kids away from balloon animals into the side of the highway. Yeah. He may have gotten bad at the balloon yeah. animals by this point. I convinced the MTO guy to let me drive the thing home. So, of course, Sarah phones me on a cell phone. You got to stop the store. You got to pick up pop and something else, blah, blah, blah. So the MTO is following me. I pull off Ritson Road, go into the, the no frills. He pulls like, I says, what are you doing? I said, oh, the white phone said I had to go into no frills first. <laughs> I go into no frills, get the stuff I had to get, put in the truck, I drive up. He pulls up back, back up right across, I back the truck in the driveway. He pulls up beside it. He pulls the plates back off the thing again. He started, not really my friend. He's not as friendly as he was earlier in the, in the event. He goes out the door, he knocks on the door, and he's, so Sarah comes to the door, she's all worried, whatever. Anyway, he says, is there somebody's birthday today? So, of course, Brock says, oh, it's my birthday, it's my birthday, and which I told the guy, and the guy's like, oh, I was just verifying, you know, that your dad told me this story. Brock's like, yeah, and Brock, the kid's awesome, kid, he's like. Brock Baker is awesome. Oh, I'm always saying, because he has actually the same birthday as me. Facebook taught me that. <laughs> December 8th, a good day. Yeah. But this kid is awesome. You see Brock Baker at the track, go and like, put him in a headlock or something. He's a, he's a cool kid, yeah. he's Brock, a cool kid. Brock says to him, I don't care what my dad did wrong. You're allowed to come in for my birthday party if you want. You don't even have to drop off the gift. Oh, what a great kid, right? Eh? <laughs> But anyway, yeah, no, we, we've had our expenses and fun with them, guys. You almost did, have you ever almost killed yourself in a tow vehicle before, or what? Because that's no. a hard that's a hard story to follow. Where were you at Camry's birthday party? Were you here? That's a terrible story. If so, a, did that Joe stop you? you? No, 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 no. Really great stories. Me driving, I've always figured it out first before we hit the road. Yeah, <laughs> I do now. <laughs> I don't know. No, no really good towing stories. We've towed with some junk, towed miles across the province and back in the, I guess the late 90s, early 2000s with the Challenger 40 race seasons with an old pickup truck, a $500 pickup truck, an open trailer and if you're lucky somebody to keep you company for the drive most of the time, yeah. you're just driving yourself and you know they'd run in the Donaldson's when you got there, they, they got, became a pattern. They'd, they'd go back to Queensville at night Wherever, wherever we were leaving, they'd go Because you got to let the dogs out. They they, yeah, they go, so they'd change gear, they do everything in the shop, and then they'd get a couple of, a couple of weeks of sleep, they'd go to the track where they'd, I'd head right to the track. I, yep. I'd stop the shop, I'd change gears, and they'd head right to the track, and sleep in the parking lot of my truck, and we got point, they'd show up with a coffee and donuts for me, and they'd, they'd just do the donuts, and they'd always be there, there I am by myself. So there was, yeah, so I'd drag around some junk, but no, no stories. 
nothing wild like that. I know that, so you're getting ready to jump out of the Thundercar division. You're, you're still going to have your Thundercar, yeah. but you're, yeah. you're going to, I mean, I really, we're going to qualify you as a, as a modified guy now. He'll you're be gonna back. Be, it's blood. Oh, yeah. I, I don't think there's any doubt you're going to be I didn't bad. even get rid of the car. <laughs> <laughs> where, where the Thundercars are right now, if you can go, if you can take that car back in time to 1995 when you started, what class would they make you run? Challenger. You'd be a challenger? Yeah. Oh, you'd definitely be a challenger. You'd have to change some stuff. You'd have to take the standard out of it. Uh, probably, yeah, they, the way it, way it is, it's a challenger car. And I do like the class the way it is. It's not an entry-level class anymore. And they really, there, there isn't. There, you can't really do an entry level rear wheel drive V8 class anymore. There's just not. It's just they're not the cars not, aren't around anymore. Not, right? no. And no, and I, I really do like the Thunder cars. I really like where they are. It might not be the popular opinion. We have kind of priced them pretty steep and priced them out of reach. If a guy you want to get started wants to only doesn't want to drive a four cylinder, doesn't want a Honda, he wants her. But they're race cars. They're neither they're great cars, but it's you're right on the edge now. They're gonna get out of hand real quick. That was part of the reason of leaving. The Thunder car to come with this. If I want a race car, so I'm gonna go race a race car. I yeah. I don't really want to be part of the problem anyway. Like, I really enjoy the class, but then you, it's gonna to get to the point where I'm gonna start spending way too much on it, and and might well leave it. It's not my class anymore. That's I mean that's and the, the of the guys that do and Sunset. It's they're really some really beautiful stuff there, and they really. But at Peterborough, and that it's I yeah. I, I didn't want to ruin it the way it is. It's, it's, it's kind of nice. Peterborough's kind of it's kind of good. There's a nice little little thing going on there. Peterborough sort of held on to the to the integrity of what of what the division was, you know, five years ago. Yeah, so, yeah it's, it's uh, sort of wise. We're not that far off of Sunset, and there's even stuff that we've got that Sunset doesn't have. The engine setback rule and a few other things. It's I think it's just the guys that are there have kept it from getting yeah, out of hand. Yeah, and that was the self policing. We kind of self policed it. That's I kind of policed myself right out of the class. That's, I, this is, you know, I, I, I want to go further, I want to do work on the stuff more, I want to do more, but this is, this is not the place, Let, this is not my class anymore, I let these guys have it, and without making it too difficult for a guy to get into it, that's... Right now, if a guy wanted to get into it, let's, let's say he already has a tow vehicle on the trail, just take that out of the yeah. equation, how much money does he have to spend to get into the Thunder Car Division, to start up? There's some really nice equipment, some really good cars, 6800 on Facebook, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I see one on there this morning, <laughs> yeah, for... It's yeah, five, six grand, four or five grand. You can get into a good car. You you can get some decent equipment. You can you can go run around. You're not gonna get embarrassed. And it's yeah, there's some. You can run mid pack with yeah. five or six grand. You can do it if you've got safety equipment already. Yep. You've got a way to get there and back. But it's if you're building one, if you're gonna go to gonna if you want to be the king and you want to play the big boys and you're building a new one. Man, you're deep into the 20s. You just got to get you're, it out of your wallet. Just say, just you're, tell me when to stop. So it doesn't have to be, but that's you're still not going to spend 20 grand and go up there and stop Genoa. No, you're not. not. A chance. No, but if you're going to build years of experience, right? Gonna, I mean, yeah, you're going to build the best car you can build right now to the rules and be legal. You're deep into the 20s. You got to be, and that's I don't know. I agree with that. That's yeah. that's even cheaper than putting the crate in there instead of going with the building. Right. Yeah. I agree with yeah. That. Yeah. You're right. That's with the, the four thousand dollar engine. Putting the crate motor. Now, when you look at the like, so car. I mean, car counts. This year, we saw we saw a dip in the Thunder Car division. Peterborough, to its credit, Peterborough's division is actually really strong right now. You guys are averaging at the end of the year of eighteen cars. Yeah, high teens. I mean, high like, teens to low twenties. So that's a nice field. And I mean, considering the fact that Peterborough brought that division back from from the grave, they had to dig oh. it out of the ground to bring it back because it was they, they, yeah. it was well, gone. They had to go find a shovel. Yeah, they, thank they, the Lord JP that. stepped out of his comfort zone. Yeah, and did that. they did a great yeah, job. Well, so I'm not was, I'm yeah. not condemning every track. But I'm saying, I mean, Ferry had a trouble. Sunset had car count troubles. Flamborough had car count troubles. So we've seen a dip. Is there like is there a chance that the counts can can bounce back here? Because Delaware had the same thing about two three years ago, where Delaware was down to 14 15 cars. Now their super stocks have rebounded to where they're getting 22 cars on an average night, and it's all good equipment. So is there a chance that that can happen at these other speedways, where the, the class can come back? Wow, that's a loaded question. You go ahead and just you <coughs> this. I'm giving you a blank canvas. The problem comes back like I told you once before, the barn car thing. The whole barn car late models and all that crap that everybody all wishes the guy's going to drag back as a late model, it's a mid to backpack thunder by the time they back it up. Hopefully get some fresh blood, grab a hold of those cars and work those cars back in and then yes, I think it will build up in car count again. I think it will increase. That being said, you're going to end up with prob potentially to find cars with bodies like mine, like the newer swooper style looking cars and stuff. 
and find <laughs> bodies like that. <laughs> you and your own stuff. They're, those cars are going to be easier to obtain still. Yeah. yeah. So you can, there still is a possibility, in my opinion, for it to grow back again to what it was. Yeah. I think I, I love. I think it's fascinating anytime anybody anybody can sort of rework an old late model and bring it out as a thunder car. Because I love just I love seeing guys breathe new life into something. You're the king of that. You got a hot rod sitting outside. You got a car with a '57 Chevy body on it. You're all about breathing new life into into old yeah. stuff. So I mean, Sobble Speedway has had a penchant for doing that the last couple of years. You see all sorts of guys find older limited late models and bring them out as a thunder car, and, and it's worked out really good. The, the the Lawrence brothers come to mind. Ron and Vaughn Lawrence, both I believe, have older late models that they've converted to, to thunder cars. Glenn Schnur's been doing it for a couple of guys as well. I think Jason Leg has has a car too. So uh, Jason's got a car. Yeah, so is that is that the, the future of this division now is is, is finding a way to, to get these barn cars and get these guys out and, and rework them and, and sort of start from, from ground zero and work our way back up? I think so. Unfortunately it's become the double edged sword. Now a guy's not gonna go and gonna drag a car to the wrecking yard and build with his kid or something he's not going to build the car anymore it's not going to happen it's you're hoping to get a father and son team retro in a car versus a father and son team or a father daughter team yep. building the car you're hoping to get them retro in a car yeah 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 but then it also opens the door for guys to build brand new cars based around late model stuff and then it's if you let the old stuff in, you're gonna get the new stuff, and then just keep the bar keeps getting pushed further and further. Yeah, so it, it's again, it's I gotta it's recycle. I gotta not. recycle the Amanda Conley ride. The middle of my car was a Amanda yeah, Conley. Yeah, and it works great. <laughs> Has, there, Has there been a bigger driver size swing in a car in history? Oh, uh, you know when I bought that car from them, from her, when I went to, to look at the car and sit in it, I didn't even fit in the window hole. You just had to just pull, just stretch it out, or what? I, I brought it to the shop and cut the cut the top hoop off the car, cut the top door bar off the car. I had to move the top door bar out like four inches, and uh, yeah, there, there was a lot of work just to make me fit in that car. If you've never seen a Amanda Conley in person, it would be like if Minnie Mouse race a car and then the one of the big monsters from Space Jam. That's fair. That's a fair yeah, yeah. right? Like that's you know, so I mean obviously the cockpit adjustments yeah, have to be made. Right. You know, I mean I mean Space Jam, that was a good movie. That was one of the best basketball games of all time was Michael Jordan against the monsters from Space Jam. I won't let us get too sidetracked. That's, yeah, that's my opinion. I digress. I, I crashed my car to death and they come to me at the track and offered me an amazing deal on that car. Uh, that just shows what kind of people that, uh, like a man Conley, <coughs> Kelly Balls, what kind of people they really are, offered me an amazing deal. <coughs> and I, I pondered on it for a few days and thought about it and then realized that what I had was definitely junk. And I was trying to do the traditional thing. I tried to find a decent chassis. I tried yeah. to find anything because I was just going to take a week off work and transplant what was left in my car. Well, I needed a whole. I, I stuck in a whole wall of quartz that was pretty stupid. Oh, yeah. There, were, there aren't too many guys that found the wall of quartz that they were able to, to bounce back with the same equipment. Yeah, that's pretty much scrap. You know what I mean? But they, they offered me a deal, and then, like I said, I went and looked at it, and buying that car from Amanda was amazing. They, Amanda wasn't there when I first looked at it, but Kelly was there, and he said, Here, I don't know what your track width rule is, but here's all the wheels I got. It comes with four or whatever wheels fits it, and blah, blah, blah. He jumped in like shocks. He went through the bin to find me shocks that were. were the like path legal shocks yep. for the Thundercar division, the right, the right valve, and that was just amazing. That was that, that was probably one of the, the nicest for for a tragic moment where I actually cried after wrecking my favorite car. That was probably one of the nicest things a competitor's ever done for me to help me. Now, whose wreck was worse at Quartha, you or Dave Bishop? I fixed Bishop's car because Bishop, <laughs> Bishop was <laughs> I fixed four. that car. Bishop was turned four, if I remember correctly, oh, and he got, man, he. Jamie, God, he hit that wall hard. Jamie, Hart, Jamie Horner hit his car. I watched that thing. She hit his car so hard. It was probably, the left front wheel of Dave's car was probably two feet off the ground, right up till it hit the wall. And I was behind him. I was pushing him down the back straightaway. So he went in and he went in that corner with all that car had, and it, it, there was a lot in that car. Because we cloned, that's how, that was my Mossport success was kind of a, a smoke and mirrors thing, because we worked a bit with Dan on some of his metric car stuff, and then Doug Wills. Yep. And then Bishop bailed from Peterborough and went to Mossport two seasons before I went to Mossport. So we'd thrown setups at Dave's car, this, that, and he'll be able to try anything. So then when it was time for me to build a car, I just had to find a metric something to start with. So right. I ended up buying a smash car, put my own front clip on it, welded it the way I want, did what I wanted. Yep. Put it all together. We go to Mossport the first night, and if the motor hadn't blown up, we possibly could have won the feature that night. That thing was out of the box. It was a two years worth of practice car. Yep. The only difference is Bishop can't drive a car that not can't. Bishop prefers to drive a car that's tight off the corner, and I prefer to drive a car that's loose off the corner. So for like six turns of bar, it's the same car. We he had the, that car got sold to its new owner with the same spring package 
and the same camshaft and the same cylinder heads. Those cars were cloned so close to each other. When when his got wrecked, and of course later on mine got wrecked, it was amazing how close those cars were. So Bishop's car got sold. Yep. Bishop's you fixed it enough that you could actually put yeah, it on the, on the market. Yeah, it's Who has it now? Who has that car? And Anderson and knows. Okay. All right. I didn't know that. We're learning stuff. Yeah, That's no, cool. We, we clipped that. Uh, there was a. I made Dave some trade-off deal. He painted something to mine or something, and I Stude. clipped his car. Stude. That's what it was. He painted my stew, my hot rod. His his Studebaker shoots fire. Dan's car shoots fire too. Does your car shoot fire too? Absolutely. Yeah. I remember I did it. Where do you think you got <laughs> so I got him. him. I remember and going tech support. I was going down the three five one one. The only time I could offer tech support to JBJ was putting flamethrowers on a hot rod too. I got a story. I got a JBJ story. The first time I've ever I ever, I ever went to dinner with JBJ was the first. I tried beef brisket for the first time because of JBJ. JBJ taught me how oh, awesome beef brisket awesome. was. Awesome. At the third wheel. Fifth wheel. Fifth, fifth wheel, wheel. Sorry. Wheel, right. Fifth yeah. wheel truck stop coming home from Kawartha. So I'm in the car. I can't remember, Brennan Doherty or someone was, was with me at the time. And we're going down the 35115. JBJ pulls up beside me and then sort of cuts in front of me. And now, like, next thing I know, he's shooting fire at me. <laughs> we're, going down, we're going down the highway, doing like 130 kilometers an hour. In no, the we're, we're doing 105. 105. 105. 105. Okay. All right, yeah, we're doing 105, 105 in the middle of the night down the 35115 after Kawartha. <laughs> Oh, oh, and shooting fire. I'm like, this is awesome. Like, if we don't wreck, this is a great story. And then we went and had brisket. It was fantastic. <laughs> That's my favorite JBJ story. You know, we went to the track, and then we had a nice meal. He shot fire at me in between. It was great. Uh, ironically enough, the flamethrower was entered by this truck because coming back from Peterborough, one day he's falling behind me. I fired the flamethrower off on mine. That was awesome. See? <laughs> so now you need to, now it's like a bucket list thing where the next time we're on the road together, you got to just sort of get in front of him and just light it up. Light up. And just let me know what time it is. Yeah. Just show me the fire. Yeah. So, I mean, you've always been like a Peterborough area guy, Mossport, like that, that, yeah. that sort of, that, that, corner, ground, that, that corner of the province, right? Yeah, you yeah. live out here, obviously. I mean, but you've, I dig that you're, you're not afraid to step out of your own backyard. You've not, you're not a one-track jet. You're oh. cool to race anywhere. So you've, you've seen a lot of, you've experienced a lot of different scenes in the last three years or so. You've been pretty much everywhere. Uh, yeah. Sobble, yeah. Barry, Sunset. Flamborough. Yeah. Yeah. You know, Delaware. Did you go to Delaware? I haven't been to Delaware yet. So you haven't gone to Delaware yet. So no. all the tracks that you've experienced then outside of your own backyard, who's got the strongest thunder car scene right now from your experience oh, as a competitor? Sunset. Really? Yeah, it's it's Yeah, I that's where all the fast cars are, that's where the strong competition is. It may not be Peter Rose. The parity is a thing. Yeah, that's no. my opinion. No, okay, well that's that's different than strong field. Okay, alright, fair enough. That's I think Peter Bro Parody wise, and I think in the spirit of one of Thundercars, I like I'm really a big fan of the way things oh, are. Peter Peterborough, yes. Peter I yes. think that Sunset is that's where the that's where the big guns are and that's yeah. where they get the there's a but Peterborough, it's nice. The parody's good. We had multiple feature winners. I think and DeBello was maybe the only one that got multiples this year. Yeah, yeah DeBello. Hey, man, I won more than once. Yeah, but you're not one of us. Oh, <laughs> God. You show up, up, you show up with your own. rocket ship oh, and not uh, uh, blow everyone away. I, I, I know. DeBello was a breakout star of this year. Absolutely. DeBello was a breakout star. I thought that was awesome because he, uh. he just sort of, I've always known of. Anthony DeBello, just, I, I was vaguely aware of him. I always knew Fidel, you know, DeBello towing, and they raced a Mossport, and that was about it. I mean, you, that Mossport, six or less class, you know, there were some good drivers that came out of that, but it wasn't, they were that, that class wasn't exactly a, a, a media darling. You didn't really hear a lot about Anything? it. Anything? I knew it existed. I couldn't tell you five drivers that raced in it, but I knew that DeBello was one of them, and he just sort of hopped in that old Bob... Is it old Bob Kish now? Uh, Bill Northam. Bill Northam. I knew it was an old school Mossworth guy. It wasn't that easy, man. That guy worked on that thing. Oh, all, absolutely. All oh, and even even on the last night of racing, he switched up his shock package and tried some different springs. They were going through my trailer, pulling shocks out of my trailer. There. That was absolutely impressive to see, like for for young blood or however you want to word it, to see him doing that, to see that he's. It's the last night. You're within yeah. five points of the other guy, and here you are. You're willing to swap a shock on a car. To learn what yeah. it's going to do, that shows you know driver confidence, talent, the whole deal is yeah. done. So got my vote on that one. Oh, right? I was, it was incredible. I mean, that's and that's what we need. Too bad you for... chicken out of autumns. Anthony, are you watching this? You chicken no out autumn, autumn colors. So you got to come next oh. year. Oh, wait a second. Colors. Wait, you don't go because you loaned me a tire and I used it autumn. So don't worry. Yeah, <laughs> you're right. Forget that. Scratch that whole thing. So I'm talking to Dan about experiencing the scene out out my end of the world, Sunset and, and Barry. You sort of you went the other way. And you went to Evans Mills, which I think is awesome. I mean, what's what's the scene like on the on the other side of the border right now for for this division? I've never even seen this class race in, in New York. So what, what's it like down there? 
Todd Musker kicked my butt. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Musker's a stud. I mean, oh, Musker is... championship showed up in an Elvis costume at the banquet. Yeah, that was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Look for the picture. That's a JBJ move. Musker oh, in a white brilliant. Elvis costume, sideburns and glasses, <laughs> collecting his trophy. Just that's Musker. That's. <laughs> I have to say that. Um, for one, it was really weird to go to Jack and they welcomed me with open arms. Yeah, that was pretty cool. That was actually I got that a couple places with this year, but their super stock division there is where it's at. Uh, there was tons of cars. I can't remember the exact number, but lots and lots of cars up into the twenties. No, thirties, I think. Wow, uh, thirty-one cars or something. And uh, I might be I might be wrong, and if I'm wrong, I apologize. That's but phenomenal. I know the, the the field was great. We swapped everything that night. We changed springs, ball joints, shocks. Spring spacers, ride height, bar. Me and Brock worked on that thing solid, solid the whole night long. We had a good car and then broke a rocker arm. Ended up falling back to seventh with broke a rocker, which was pretty good in the end. But they go to that track and just be welcomed in with open arms. That was pretty cool and lots of cars. And their rules package there is absolutely awesome. I was going to bring that up. Have you raced Evans Mills? I haven't Evans Mills. I haven't been to Evans Mills. I've been, I was I was loaded up to go the first time you went and it got rained out. You, you, you went all the way there and got rained out. I remember that. Yeah. Two and days there and thousands, thousands of dollars at all the freaking... My wife had shots like all crazy. Was horrible. You would have killed just for that. The tire bill for the Thunder Car looked way better than the outlet mall trip with Sarah. We were sitting in the parking lot at the hotel at the Travel Lodge in Watertown. We're 15 minutes away and we could see the rain from where we're sitting. I swear. If I was emotional enough, tears would have fell out. I'm talking to the girl on the phone. I'm like, look, I drove all this way. Let me come. And Leslie's name. I'm like, Leslie, let me come out and just turn laps you on know the wet her track. Name. My first I'm like, name. I'm like, is Leslie. Yeah, please, dear, just let me. And she's like, listen to it. She's like, she said, it's, oh, you can't come out. I said, I made it. So then, of course, we're the next. We stay over that night. We're going to go home the next day. And Sarah, because she's awesome. Sarah's like, you know what, babe? We should drive by the track. I'm like, yeah, that's what I need. A kick in the bad spot, right? <laughs> yeah, let's drive by there. We've got three days, thousands invested in outlet walls. Then we got to go back across the border. And if they weigh the thing, it's going to weigh, you know, three times what it did on the way down. A lot there. of shoes and coats, man. I mean, <laughs> shoes and coats, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Off before, yeah. We're sitting there watching the weather. We pulled the pulled the chute, loaded up, ready to go. It was going to open the season. Yeah, pulled the chute. You end up getting so. Oh, man, it was so sad. So there, so there, the the Evans Mills Thunder Car. Some of them are Musker's got an old cast car or an old OSS car, yeah. and he transferred to that. And you've got an old limited late model, just the and middle. You, and you got just the middle, just the middle. And you were able to, to to sort of fit right in there. There's old Tiger Sportsman cars from from down in Vermont from Thunder Road. I know oh, some of those yeah. guys are those cars. One of our steel body four link metric cars out there that rules. Weight provisions for everything. They can so they can put you if you if you bring anything even remotely close to a Thunder Car or a Super Stock, Evans Mills has, has got a weight penalty. Oh yeah, yeah. Pretty much slide right in the It's not your Three link Camaro clip cars, four link metric yeah. cars with steel bodies. Yeah, well, they they got a way to make it all work. So yeah. their rule package is far more welcoming than what we than, than what we would have at a weekly oh, yeah. pack up here. You're not gonna go down there like Todd went down there and he worked his butt off to do what he did this year. But you're not gonna go down there and just kill them with a whatever car with a a different hub or different brake package right. or like some of the stuff around here that makes all the guys freak out and cry you go there with that stuff there nobody's gonna freak out and cry they're gonna go oh okay well try it tonight and if we feel it's an advantage we're gonna deal with it appropriately and you're gonna get that run a little more red and then right. you got to stop that weight you got to turn that weight you got to accelerate that weight so that 50 pounds turns into a huge it turns in one 50 pound block of lead is three penalties at each end of the track because you got to stop it, turn it, and accelerate it. So that's three penalties, 50 pounds. Three I penalties, 50 pounds. That's an awesome way to look at it. That's I what love it. Is. it. Yeah. I love it. A case of pop weighs 22 pounds. How many people can carry two cases of pop up and down two flights of stairs? Chris will do that probably because she's pretty strong. <laughs> she's way stronger than me. I heard me. she's got to carry you she's out She's all like, oh, she's oh, way stronger than me. I'm like, I'm like yeah, I could probably carry two cases of pop. <laughs> I, yeah, I think that rule pack, we're looking at that when we talked about going down there and it. Musker was in, in Casey Cavanaugh. I said, hey, you gotta come try yeah. this here. Come try yeah. this here. So we looked at the rule book and I went, huh, well, there's your answer. Mm -hmm. Well, there it is. Yeah. Then now your barn car doesn't have to be cut apart. Yes. And it's, you, you, yeah. And the car counts show. Yeah. It, it reflected the car counts. It's a pretty good yeah. set of rules. So if a track, let, let's say, let's say, we'll say Barry or, or, or Sobble, one of the tracks that, that sort of was combating car count issues this year. Not so much Sobble. Sobble has a good division, but. I don't want to. I'm just trying to spread the love around. Yeah. If they were to adopt a rule book like that, where you you sort of have just a weight penalty for anything, would, would it be easier to incorporate these these barn job late models into the field? It, it would it be easier to get these guys Absolutely. off the sidelines and into the game. Absolutely. It's, it's also a mindset. You need to somehow magically zap 
uh, 7th to 10th, no, 5th. You need to magically zap the traditional 5th to 10th guy to that track for two weeks so that he can see that the shiny car with the swoopy front fenders and the shiny rear end, that that car finished 8th and 10th. And, and he can see that the Don't car that still had, pardon? Don't be afraid of it. Yeah, and you need to see that the car that still had the steel fenders pulled a, pulled a checkered flag. Chrome's never won you anything, kids. Hey, Chrome's worth five horsepower every season. <laughs> I don't care who you are or where it is. If it's not winning, Chrome plates, they sell them, they're just little. Their aluminum ones are lighter, but the Chrome ones are way faster. You don't, don't even put pot rivets in, just lay them on and plug them in. I saw that on some mini stocks this year. I was like, that's some cheating stuff right there. That's Autumn's Colors cheating right there. I saw a mini stock at Thunder Road once in Vermont where the entire tin kit was diamond plate. That would look awesome. The whole well, thing. It was a Thunder Cart Sobble. Was there something yeah. on Thunder Cart Sobble? Yeah, I can't remember. Yeah, it's that um, uh, Ghost Rider wrap on it, the entire interior. Oh, oh I can't his name. It's, a, it's a super nice guy. Checker. The um, interior was checker plate. Yeah, 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 and yeah. It was good, yeah. I just, I walk by, I'm like, huh, well, that's something. Look at that. Okay. Is there a division in Ontario right now where the racers are their own worst enemies worse than the Thundercar division right now at this time? Because it just feels like every driver's yeah, getting late like, model. Is late model, late model on a yearly basis worse where we're pushing the envelope every year? Because it feels like every year Thundercar is just, just going a little bit further, a little bit further. Late model, I take a fat guy like me and stick me in a three year old car, and I'm lucky to finish 10th. Really, and I don't care how how many tires I feed at or whatever. But yeah, I weigh th I lost weight. I weigh I'm down to 355 pounds. I was thinking you look slim. Oh, you look you. good. Yeah, look, yeah. I got extra space. No, I, look, I like it. Look, you look that look, in this shirt's now. only a 4X without That's my good. names on it. Look at that. Me, like it's working. Use every inch. Yeah. I want to see more bench racing guests in the future. Yeah. And get a shirt made Think up. Think about this. Song. I love look it. Look at that. Don't you guys? Don't you guys be? Looking at my man boobs too much, neither. I mean, it's cold in yeah, here. Yeah. Yeah. But but no, I, I think that they, they 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 just beat up Randy's car. Like his is a how car, and it would have been state of the art. It was state of the art when it was new, and they just the way how was doing it. They put extra plate in the cars to make them safer and better. And now, I'm talking to a bunch of guys earlier the other day, and I hear that they're cut like 20 pounds of extra bars out of a car, a random car, and they cut 20 pounds of bar out of it because you need to get the weight out of the car that bad. Well, then you put a fat guy like me in the car, then I'm just shooting myself in the foot. Like, I, I think that they're, and lighter is faster. It's the lighter the car, the cheaper on brakes, the cheaper on tires. I agree with all that. I totally agree with they're that. Fragile. But I mean, they become so fragile when they're light. My thunder, my old Thunder car had the one that I wrecked at Corden. It had no X in the bottom of it. It had muffler pipe front tube in it. It had inch and a quarter front. Anything that didn't need to be one and three quarters, that's how that car was built. With my extra, my, my small body jammed in there which is basically 400 pounds at the time, it had 400 pounds of lead in that thunder car. And when it hit the wall at Quartha, it jumped it. Like, it just turned to trash. So, I mean, there's something, there's such a fine line. And I think, in my opinion, I think the late model guys, they're, they're beating themselves up. And it's, <clears throat> the cars are turning good, and they're using bump stops, and they're doing all kinds of neat stuff, and the technology and all that's so oh, crazy. Cool. And, like, we got, for back to Thunder for a second, yep. the, one of the biggest differences we got in Thunder is the shock packages. I would kill to be allowed to use real shocks on my car again. In 98, I ran split valve shocks, and it hasn't been until the last two years I got beat up into running traditional valve shocks. And then here we are this year, cutting the mounts off the car, changing the shock angles, and doing all kinds of legal yet trick difficult stuff that most people don't know. I, McCall's know how to do it all. So McCall's can put together a Thunder car with stock shocks on it. They move all the stuff to get in the same spot I did then I have an advantage, the McCall car has an advantage, and the guy who's whining and complaining that he wants to use those stock shocks, he still screwed himself. <laughs> he would have been way better off to buy a hundred, uh, two or three eighty dollar shocks and learn how to work split valves than to go whine for the rule for straight valves because he screwed himself. I got myself an advantage because now I have a car that runs crappy 77 shocks on the thing, just junk I would normally never even pick up off the floor at a flea market. I'm running those on my car and I'm finished third at Autumn's Colors against the car that's running split valve shocks. The guys are running way better shock packages than I got. I'm running trash. I take my car on that same crappy shock because I took it to Evans Mills with those junk on yep. it. I took it to Ottawa with that junk on it. And, and here it is. It's because I figured out how to move around and what to do with them. Well, all the guys that wanted them so bad, they just shot them. Because they put a shock on, they hook it on the control and they hook it on the frame. They go, oh, that's pretty. <laughs> I just, oh, I just bought that one. It's, it's gold. It's, and then all of a sudden, I heard a guy tell me this year, he's like, yeah, we put the black ones on the car. 
I'm looks like, better when you're passing them. I was like, really? So you know about the whole pro merger thing? That's pretty impressive. Like, I was, I was, and you know what? And not to knock who it was, I won't say. It. Yeah. They were at the top of their game with that yeah. new shock, and they, in their own mind, they felt they were going to win the feature that night. There you go. It's all and mental. With their shock, but in the end, they didn't. I See, wrecked their night. If you've ever been to a December rules meeting, this dude is the most likable villain. You've I ever almost met. made a whole meeting without saying <laughs> one word. <laughs> he's he's the guy. When people are complaining about rules, is really all they're trying to do is slow down the 63. That's really the that's the game plan when pretty you walk much. into a yeah. right. That's pretty, pretty much, much it. Pretty How much. can we slow the 63 down? I think we're just gonna fix like a parachute to the back of the car for 2015 and just save the whole rules meeting. Yep. Just do just <laughs> put a big parachute I'll holes in the on the back there. Oh yeah, I'm sure you will. Carbon fiber fiber oh, tethers yeah, for the oh you'll yeah. figure something out. I'm sure you will. Parachute will fall off every lap every lap two and the parachute's <laughs> yeah. gone. Yeah, it's but no, I mean the, with the the my car this year with all of the extra scrutiny over the body. Yeah. And I had plastic front fenders and they're heavier than what you could make a tin fender for. Anyway, and finally for Peter Brill to appease them, and I understand the integrity of the class, the way they're trying to deal with it. I don't agree with it, but I understand. So I took some, some tin and I popped ribbon on the outside of my plastic fenders, painted it the same color, so there you go, there's a steel fender. <laughs> and then at Autumn's Colors, my aerodynamic, you know, my 15 second lap aerodynamic advantage my car has, got kind of beat up by what, lap half? <laughs> Yeah, that's you made just it the past was the most. What would be to start finish on the back? Of the, you made it past there. I didn't even make it to that imaginary he, like, line. Hearing I had his brakes on, man. I swear, man. I hearing you guys recant oh. the wreck post race was like my favorite part of the whole weekend. Like you, you made you were by about twenty seconds into the race. Oh, that was about oh, yeah. two days to qualify for twenty seconds worth of enjoyment. Oh, yeah. Four days were the crap. <laughs> Four days yeah. to get to that point. Yeah. How much of that wreck did you see? I watched so, the whole. Was that it? You, know, you, were, you were in it. That was it. No, I watched developing. It's autumn colors. It's lap one. We didn't. There was a medical issue. We've been in the strap in our cars for forty-five minutes. Everybody's ants. Yeah, I saw that coming. I saw it coming yeah. before the cars hit the track, man. Yeah. I saw that. It was. But when I saw it, yeah, I was coming in the middle of one and two, and I was looking way far ahead as yeah. I could see. And I watched. I see the smoke. I could see a, a car pointing yeah. the wrong direction, and. I can see it developing and it just... So you're on the brakes um, and I'm, it didn't matter. It didn't matter. I was out of the gas looking for a hole and it didn't matter. But <laughs> and I seen a car, I seen a car turn, I seen a car go into one and two, a nice line, come off the curb. I seen the car hit the curb, the left front tire of the car hit the curb and it bounced up and I went... And you just know this is all bad. I went, that ain't going to work. And, and inadvertently I watched it after and he just got up and hit the left rear of the other car and, and Feist was around. And... Uh, I actually have to apologize a bit because I said on my, my post race interview, which everyone's seen, I'm sure. Got I said, a I said news. he crapped out his brain to after watching it. The guy that was behind me was not the he I thought. Okay. <laughs> so I still have a he issue with one he, but it wasn't that particular he. So you know who you were, drove in the back of my car, pushed the bumper clean into the fuel cell. You know who you were, and it wasn't you. I didn't mean him. <laughs> So you can depend from the doubt on that one. That's go freebie. Go see the the JBJ <laughs> post race autumn colors interview. I got a red glove on. I was like, whoa! Oh, and you know, that, thing. Oh, oh, that was sad. Phenomenal. You got your first win this year. I did. You've been trying for a long time in a multitude of different divisions, and you finally made it happen this year in a class that there are no gimmies at Peterborough. There are no easy outs at Peterborough. You got to no. go there and you got to work for it. You did it this year. This was this was a great year for the for that zero nine car. You had a, your whole program had an awesome year. You did. Why now? Is it just years of experience? You just finally put it all together. Like what 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 made what allowed you to sort of get around that corner? Because you you wore fantastic pretty much everywhere you went this year. Actually, that, was was awful. that was awful. That, that was, was awful. awful. Oh, it was awful. But the weather was nice oh. and solid. It was a really nice was day. Beautiful, beautiful <clears throat> place. Yeah, it was. Yeah, that did. So matter. we'll forget about the dash for cash. Other than that, though, good year. Pretty much everywhere you unloaded, you you were, yeah, you were quick and had a good year. Yeah, I had a good time. Um. Just, just years of working at it. Just working at it, working at it. It's, it's a fairly slow process. I, I, I just, no, I mean, just came together this year. We were always just, we we're the last couple of years closer, 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 and, the, and we just made it work this year. Last year, Gordy had a couple of nice. Well, yeah. They, yeah, ended up seconds. Yeah, but they were awesome, almost well, some, first. They were really good. Yeah, running. some really good. Yeah, it just it all came together this year and. It was cool and because you know maybe maybe four or five years ago it was you know Dan Price yeah that dude's. Super nice guy. He's got an awesome car, and now it's Dan Price is a dude that you've got to deal with. Like now, you, you know, you're not just that personable, affable guy. Now all of a sudden, if you unload the zero nine cars, there, that's a dude that you're gonna have to deal with, and you've sort of stepped up into that next yeah. level. It's yeah, awesome. And I never felt that way. I I've never felt that 
Oh, I'm just, hey, he's here again. There's another guy. Oh, there's another car here. That's, I never really felt that. I don't, Peterborough, I guess I always kind of thought, you know, you have to deal with me at Peterborough, but I never really felt that way unloading anywhere else. I don't know, maybe I, I just never felt that way, but maybe you guys think that way. Maybe I just, Absolutely. That's, that's pretty cool. I agree. But, yeah. When you look at, I mean, we're, this is, this is a, a homemade structure we got here. It's, I mean, we're, you know, and I'm not, I'm just, I mean, no. we're not in a, a three bay shop. I've done some bench racing shoots. In some nice facilities, Baker's Motorhomes. And you walk in there and you're like, yeah, I can see how this whole operation comes out of here. But here, you get everything you, you need. You get a badass, nasty, fast car out of a shop that that really just has the the essentials. And I, I think that's awesome, man. I think we need more of that in racing. We need less stackers and toter homes, despite the fact that our mini stock ended up at Alvin Cole. <laughs> and we need more shops like battery change, charge it up. We're back. So we're at the 50 minute mark. Final question for these two, and it's going to be a good one. Dan Price, you're up first. You're going over to the modified. You're not saying goodbye, I'm assuming, to Thunder Car. No. Everyone's going to ask you what you're doing next year, so I'll just save you the. Now you don't have to answer it 150 times. You can just answer it once. Right now, what's the plan for the, for the car? Uh, the plan for the car not to go anywhere. I'm not moving it. The car's not for sale. Uh, I love that car too much. If time allows, we want to turn to go dirt racing with it. At Brighton. At Brighton. Turn to a pro stock, take it to Brighton. Why not? We talked, we got the motor and tranny right of it there in the Thunder, in the mod. Paul's uh, in his step for He's got another motor kicking around. He got the tranny. We go put a drivetrain back in. We'll be part owners on the car. We got, you know, we'll go Thunder car racing with it. But then he goes, well, then you show up the track, there's pressure, right? There's an assumption yeah. that you're going to, it's a pay track. You show up, the eyes are, then, well, how do we, how do we not do that? So what we go dirt racing? Now, what see, do I don't, I don't ever get to go to Brighton. Cause it's a little far from my base. Yeah, do Saturday it. nights, I don't get the, it's, it's. They, I think they start after us and end before us. Or I've always call wanted to go. I, I honestly <laughs> think Dilly might murder me if I called in sick at times. I don't know. I, I missed the you're show. Tweet, you're tweeting them. You're watching the bus. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, I missed the show there this year, and they were not happy. They were like, "Look, that's the last time you do that." I'm like, "Okay, cool." So, why can we get it Osh weekend one night? One night. One night this year. Because I go to Osh weekend all the time. It's possible. They're. Uh, if we get the car together, we, we're going to see what happens. It's all going to be on time and we'll hear whether our schedule's allowed. But we just want to go dirt racing. It's, we've all talked about it. None of us ever tried dirt racing. All the Sudsy and Balsa. We've talked. We go dirt racing. We go dirt racing. Well, now we got a car that we can throw back together and we go dirt racing. Stud, no, no promises. Start the rumor mill right now. Dan Price is coming to Osh Weekend Speedway in 2015. That's <laughs> how it starts. That's how rumors start. No problem. That's how they start. No. I, I heard promise earlier. <laughs> unlimited time, unlimited funds. Yeah. Right. It's, it's, but yeah, well, that's that's the plan for now. That's just to, to turn, turn a pro stock and try to hit some dirt tracks with the thing. That's why not? Why the heck not? <clears throat> Final question, and I think I'll probably end up asking both of you because I love it. I love this so much. The Thunder Car division is like it's like a fraternity. It's like a like a brotherhood almost. And I don't really think I'm, I'm using really that. Along. I don't think I don't I'm don't using that word <laughs> too strong. I, I really believe. How do you know where this place was? Because you got dudes that have raced together for years in this division, and they won't give it up. Like look at the Mastodon. Look at Sean Chenow. This this dude has had access to almost every division he can run, and he said I will never fully be out of the Thunder Car division. I'll never step away from it, no matter how many. Pro lights or supers I own. Thunder cars are the most fun I've ever had. So, and it's it's a choice few that they can they can race a Thunder car and have fun with it and make it work. And I was with Andy Ford last week, and he told me a story about when he was racing for the Speedway, and and on an almost weekly basis he would offer his car to Derek Lynch. And Derek Lynch, promoter at the time, you know, super late model dude, ran an ACT, awesome phenomenal wheelman in anything he steps foot in. He would constantly say, no, no, I don't want to, I don't want to run a Thunder car. No, I'm all right. And finally they asked him why. He said, because the Thunder cars, you're, you're in a car that doesn't want to work. You're driving something that doesn't want to turn on street tires that aren't meant to be on a racetrack, flying into a corner at a hundred mile an hour, however, however fast you're going to court the speedway. And it just wasn't for him. And this is a guy that, that took a late model to, to St. Air. Or, or flew around, you know, some of the some of the bigger tracks in the Northeast, and he just would had no interest in, in driving a Thunder car. So for a Thunder car guy, that's the why you love the division, right? I mean, the fact that these are cars that don't want to work, and these are street tires that aren't meant to be pushed to the level that you're pushing them to. That's what you guys dig about this division. Oh, absolutely. You drive the late model car, you make one screw up, you fall back 12 spots in the freight train, and you're just parked for the next, God knows how many feet until it's finally over. Whereas you run the Thunder car. 
tighten up your seat belts and jump up at the top. If it works this lap, cool. If it works for this <laughs> lap and it doesn't work next lap, get your crap together, get back on the throttle and figure out what you're going to do. It's, there is no easy inches in any racing at all. But in the Thunder Car thing, the tires that we got right now, those retreads, they come and go a little teeny bit, and you can abuse them maybe three squeals. Yeah. And as by the four squeal, you're, you really got to drive that car. And I mean, I won't squeal a tire in a heat race. I'd rather take a second to win a heat race to stop squeal the tires. Yeah. But they pay money for features. I'll squeal the tires for every single lap, and then I burn it if I get a chance when it's over. What do you think? Is, that, is it a brotherhood? Is it? Is it? You know, where these you just sort of wear that like a badge of honor, running these yeah. cars that, and trying to make them do things they're not meant to do. Yeah, making a car. I look at more from the, to the technical standpoint. That's I'm kind of a car guy. I think more of a car guy. Yep. That. Yeah, you're taking a car that really has no business doing what it's doing, <laughs> and and just by messing with it, messing with beating changing this and beating on it and just screwing around with stuff, you can make. No one ever said an 86 Monte Carlo was a good handling car. Well, they're awesome. They're terrible cars. But the things we do with them. And I, you, could, you could bring... No, I, I'd have you take a brand new Corvette. You'd, you'd have a hard time keeping up with the lap times that we make we make these cars do because they're set up to do one thing. We take yep. a car that... You know, against all odds. Against all odds. It's, you Fun take it's a rusty old junk that was no good when it was new and you made it go around the corner. You made it work. And that's pretty cool. Like that's, that's there's awesome. something to that. This honestly might have been, and I don't know if it's this might be my what favorite. Do next year. Do you want to you want to go there? Because this is how the rumors start. You want to do this? Sure. What are you doing next year? What are you doing next year? What am I doing next year? I have no idea yet. <laughs> <laughs> I took up bowling. I'm bowling Monday nights with my kids. Nice. Thursday night with some friends. Oh, so a ten uh, pin. Ten pin. Do you use the bumpers? No, only no. one. Oh. Oh. I had a goal in my life. If I could make it to the end of my life, and they could say. He was a crappy golfer and a crappy bowler. I won. I have no interest in bowling and no interest in golf. So carry on. I went yeah. bowling one time with Andy Camera. Bowling is awesome. Me. Killed me, man. I'm starting to actually play and pay attention. I'm up over 200 again, which is, I guess, where you're supposed to be somewhere in that ballpark. And uh, it's a lot of fun. We sort of junk into the three park games? Guys. Three games together get you 200? Two games. Well, you get 200 a game. Oh, a game. A game, man. Oh, wow. Yeah, no, I try not to. I have a problem. I go right now, I'm going with, uh, with the guys, the Farm Bro guys. We're all going to have a he ball. He outdrank them at Autumn Colors. Yes, I did. I was way sick or good, Lord. <laughs> you want to have a badge of honor? Oh. That's a badge of honor. <laughs> and uh, we, the problem we got is that I bowl at about 35 kilometers an hour, and the machine screws up at 30. <laughs> so I got I to gotta baby bowl the first one. And then they say, all right, John, go at her. In the second game, I can crank the thing down back to about 35 and then just start striking and having a, having a ball, and it's just too much fun. So that's it? No more racing, just bowling? Oh, we're God, no, we're going to race something. What, what, what are racing? Are we going to Oshweekend? Are you going to bring your car to Oshweekend? No. That'd be badass. That'd be fun. Put Jared the screen in that, that car? Yeah. Yeah. Stewart Take the Lexan out? Let's go. No, no. I don't, I don't know. I, honestly, uh, I don't know. Maybe... Uh, Turn one in a dirt car, you can try it the first time. All right. There we go. <laughs> oh, I heard it. There you go. Save me the work of doing it. We're going to Oshweekend. I know if I can... If I could swing it, maybe uh, I already had a, a good offer on some sponsorship help if I do uh, OSS car and maybe go play with uh, Mike. Um, Mike maybe, Nelson, shout out to Mike Nelson, Nelson. Yeah. phenomenal off and cover. Maybe go, maybe go do that. If not, um, rebody my car to something square and uglier for Peterborough. I got some fifties mm -hmm. roofs now that now that I'm on the class. <laughs> it won't offend me so much if somebody else. Oh, you it. already did the fifties thing. I want to. I got to do something else. So I got thirty uh, stuff in the yard. Oh. <laughs> That's what you need to do. I mean, and maybe there's a draw for a modified car this weekend. Maybe yep. you guys will see this. Maybe I already won my new modified, and I'm going to go play with them guys. I love the drawing. Thing. We need to do more no of this. We need to do more. Until somebody gets pinched. Until someone gets pinched. It's a hundred dollar risk at something. That's it's a lottery ticket, man. Yeah, yeah, why not? You know, hell yeah. But no, it would be. A, I promise you, we'll be at Autumn's Colors. I not promise you, we'll be at any particular. You got to go to Sunset. Track. This has been a thing. How long have we been doing this? You, I say you got to come Sunset. You say I'll be there. I lied. I was told I was told not to show up. I was told if I showed up, I get disqualified, and that burned me. Deep. Even at the velocity? I'm not. Yeah, why? If I can't show up on a normal night and match the rules, why can't I show up at a special? Why am I going to spend thirty dollars to get me and everyone in my family in to get beat up? Yeah. Last time I was there, I got punished. I wasn't allowed my kids in the pits. Everybody else had their kids in the pits. Brock was sicker than heck. Sarah had to sit in the grandstands with them all night. I lost the crew girl for the night. My kid was sick. I should have just turned around and went home. We ended up winning. Then I spent three hours in tech. It was so frustrating. The guy that got second was loaded up, slap-ass drunk, 
falling all over the place. The tech guy kept walking down to his trailer, grabbing a beer, walking back to our trailer, wearing a matching shirt to the guy who got second. And I'm the devil. I For the record, that's that was it. that's a that's like that's like three regimes. Yeah, that was a long time. A ago. long time ago. Long time ago. But long time I'm just ago. saying, that was a long time ago. But either way, <laughs> that stuff just burns me deep. I'm, yeah. I'm a stubborn ass. I have been my whole life. My mom can test that, and that's just that's just the way it works. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe the cards will be in my favor, and I'll just wake up one morning and head up there. And if not, I just won't. I, I'm having. I have so much fun joining up with the Farm Road Boys. We do Delaware. What about Delaware? I trek Delaware. Let's do that. I got to buy tires for there. Delaware's got a badass super stock division. No, anybody buy me some tires for for Delaware? There you go. We got a lot of Delaware support. I got a lot of Delaware okay. viewers. If I, I can find, if I can find six tires, even used, so I got some options. I can go to Delaware one night. I get get to the track. I'll mount your used tires. And if you really want to back when it's over, I'll unmount your tires. Oh. Whatever's left, we'll give them back them. There you go. And that was the only thing that stopped me from Modelo this year, because they use a different tire. And I don't agree on this whole tire blending thing. If you're going to go to the track, you should run your home track rules, your home track tire, or the tire that they run at the track. Because those guys support whatever track. They support it every week, week in, week out. And you got you owe, as the track promoter, as the guys run, as the tech guy, you owe it to Dan when he's racing Peter for the whole year to make the other cars that come play with Dan closer to dance car. You owe it to whoever. You owe it to Sean. You want to bring a car up to, to Flam Six Road? Tires. Six yeah. tires. Okay. You bring so a car up to Flam Road, you're going to race against Sean. Kenny Taylor McNichol, uh, Daryl Lake, Trevor Culver, some of the real cool guys, friends of the show, friends of SL Promotions. Let's find six tires and get JBJ to Delaware this yeah, year. Come it's on, a man. badass division, man. You love Mossport Court, you will fall in love with Delaware. You just got to tell me what gear to run. I run one of those crappy crate motors. The thing sucks, but it's a crate motor. And We're going to do this. Dave's going off this weekend. JBJ's coming to Delaware. Friday right. nights are going to get more interesting. Thank you guys so much for coming on. This has been one of the most fun interviews I've ever done on Ben Chase. So I promise you, we will do a follow-up volume two for this for this twosome, this tag team, the Towers of Pain right here. We're going to do it. Uh, it might be our season finale later on in the winter. I don't know. We'll have to see how everyone's schedule shake up, but I promise you, let me know what you think. Follow me on Twitter at It's Special Lewis. Leave uh, some Facebook comments, comment on the YouTube page, share it up, and let me know what you think. Fast Eddie Racer has made it happen. We're back for season two. I'm excited. I don't know where we're going next. It's going to be somewhere cool. Thanks for coming back. Thanks and Fast Eddie Race where it comes in everyone's size. They even have fat guy stuff like me, but mine isn't here yet. Yep. Hint, hint. They will, they will, they will here. work with your complicated figure <laughs> to make you look like a star. So for that, we're out of here. Thank you for coming back, and we'll see you in episode two of season two a little bit later on.